Hi everyone, uh, my name is Eli Gescheit uh, and I'm a partner at Siemens Energy Ventures and today I'm going to uh, speak with you about company building and entrepreneurship uh, in energy and climate. Um, I'll just start with a few, uh, a few words about where I come from and my background so you'll understand um, my insights and my experiences. Um, so I am uh, Israeli. I spent five years in the military in different uh, intelligence and communications uh, roles in special units. And then I joined an early stage startup in the medical space in Israel. Um, uh, that company was uh, um, acquired by Roche Diagnostics in 2010. And I did uh, innovation management at Roche for several years. I left the company to build other startups. Uh, in different areas. So I built four startups uh, across uh, uh, along the years of my career, uh, built uh, companies in cloud computing to uh, climate and consumer software. And then I joined the Amazon Web Services, the leader startup and venture capital programs. Um, and before joining Siemens Energy, I was an entrepreneur in residence, uh, building companies and investing in companies in mobility, sustainability, and climate. Um, so I spent time in big corporations and small startups, but I also mentor and advise in, uh, in other um, organizations. I'm a mentor in residence at Techstars and also an advisor in Stanford Business School. Um, and that leads me to bring all that uh, experience and information to um, help you ask, what does it mean to build ventures and startups in the energy and climate space? And I want to start by showing you um, the ecosystem, at least one ecosystem, the Israeli ecosystem uh, in energy. And what you can see there that for energy alone, it is extremely broad, right? So the opportunities and possibilities for you to build startups in different areas span in very diverse uh, things from storage to hydrogen to things around grid stability, um, but also things around hardware and software, right? So you can build things uh, around uh, long duration energy storage that are more hardware focused, but you can also build a lot of things around software and data, around carbon management and grid management, um, data and even cyber. But this is just the first step. We're talking only about energy, but if we go into climate, that is even broader. And when we talk about climate startups, building a, a venture in the climate space, um, you talk also about food tech and ag tech. Um, you talk about um, things like infrastructure and you talk about big data, right? So the areas in which you can play and you can find problems uh, both in the climate space and specifically in energy space are endless, right? Uh, and I'll uh, explain a little bit about what are what is this opportunity um, and also what others expect uh, climate uh, to be uh, in the next several years. Um, now, th there's a question, why is it a good time for entrepreneurs and people like you to build companies in that space, in energy and climate space? And I'll mention two quotes from two really, um, um, two really notable entrepreneurs and venture capitalists. Um, the first one is uh, a Facebook exec, an ex-Facebook exec, and now he's the founder and leading uh, Social Capital, which is a really in, um, interesting uh, venture capital that invests minority investments in startups. And he says the world's first trilli trillionaire will be made in climate change. And another quote from this guy that you do, probably don't know, Elon Musk, um, and he says, with the innovation that is needed to transform entire businesses and economies to net zero emissions, there will be more billionaires created over the next two decades than during the internet boom, right? So if you think about what happened with Google and Amazon and Facebook and the internet, we're expecting this to even be bigger in the climate space. Whatever you um, identify as, a, as an opportunity, energy, food tech, ag tech, these are areas that are not only doing social good, but those are great business opportunities. And there is there's this guy, Joe Biden, who is now the president of the United States, 
Uh, and he says the signs are unmistakable, the science is undeniable, and the cost of inaction keeps mounting, right? So we have scientific validation. There's good business case to build great businesses at scale. Um, and also, there's another element that's coming from governments, which is policy that we will talk about it in, in, in the next slides. But let's deep dive into why is it a good opportunity and, and look at the capital, the venture capital space for you to identify the areas that you can build um, in companies. So just in 2021, the amount that was invested in climate startups uh, was $53 billion. The, um, this is a, a, an amazing uh, amount of capital that was invested um, by both private equity and venture capital funds. And in this slide, you can see um, how the different industries was, were capitalized, right? So you can see that mobility was a great uh, area of, um, of startups to, to get um, capital injected in them, but also energy, right? Next to it, uh, there was agriculture. And there are other uh, areas that are just at the early stage now in terms of carbon emissions, carbon reduction, things like carbon capture and even carbon management. But it's clearly going up in terms of the uh, investment. Um, this graph really shows, this is a graph from the Climate Tech VC uh, newsletter. And this is something that I highly, highly recommend you to sign up. It's a great resource for entrepreneurs and for uh, venture capitalists to identify new deals, new trends. And it's the same thing. But what you can see here is that the energy space got shrunk a little bit because this is only for venture capital, right? So there's a, a quite a significant amount also for private equity that get invested in the energy space. And the reason is that some of the uh, startups that go and get capital uh, in the energy space require high capex. They require an initial capital to just get started because those are hardware companies, because uh, it might take longer to get from TRL 1 to TRL 9 uh, in terms of commercialization. Uh, but obviously, there's growth during 2020, uh, 2021, uh, and now in 2022, everybody talks about the downturn in the financial uh, situation. But even here, when you, th when you see energy, energy is one of the only uh, industries that are still experiencing growth. Uh, even if you compare it to other areas like in, like in consumer uh, and other uh, industries. There's one thing that I wanted you to keep in mind when you're going and um, saying you want to, you know, build a startup in, in that space, right? Um, if you want to shoot, shoot, don't talk, right? Um, there is a really important part for activists in the climate space to make a change, and that has made a significant change for us uh, in the in the recent year in terms of policies. But now there's a conversion. We need more builders. We need people that are able to take ideas to solve tangible, real problems in the energy space. Um, and for this, you are not alone, right? So um, we need more builders like, like you, but as I've, as I've shown, uh, we need capital, and there's a significant amount of private capital and also uh, public capital that is going into those um, ventures. So for you, it's a huge opportunity, and you know that you can uh, capitalize and scale them with that capital. There's the policy element, right, that allows you to move faster, allows you to experiment, allows you to scale and do things not only in specific countries, but with COP2026 uh, and COP27 coming, that will be global and it keeps um, increasing. And there are corporates, right? So there is no single company, uh, at least in my view, that is able to do this uh, energy transition um, and climate change to solve those issues alone. So as we do at Siemens Energy uh, Ventures and Siemens Energy, the company, right? We are here to connect between startups and corporates and you know other corporates that uh, friends of mine are in the same uh, area and want to work with startups. And this is why you need to also understand how to work with corporates 
um, identify the corpus that you want to work with, and also learn from them, exchange knowledge, ex exchange insights. Um, what are the mechanisms that you have in order to start your companies, right, but also to scale your companies? There are many, many mechanisms today that exist. One is venture capital that I talk about, right? This is not only money, but also value in terms of connection, access to network, access to knowledge. Uh, and some of them are powerhouse in the US that are focused on digital, you get contrarian ventures that are also running the Energy Tech Summit, which is a big uh, um, conference in, in, in Europe, Siemens Energy Ventures, Breakthrough Energy, uh, the Bill Gates uh, new organization to, to tackle climate change. You also have accelerators and incubators. So Y Combinator, 40% of their portfolio companies were focused on climate in, the, in their recent cohort. Tech stars are uh, building their sustainability capabilities. So those are huge um, uh, opportunities for you to kickstart because those are accelerators and you can join early to help you uh, start your businesses. Then you have also venture builders, right? So you got Google X and you got um, things like Carbon 13 in the UK, and they're focused on solving a problem and building things from within uh, their organizations. So they take individual uh, venture builders and help them form the companies from A to Z to the scale. Uh, you also got fellowships for those of you who want to, um, uh, to check on deck Climate fellowship is something that is really uh, helpful. So you can join and you have a community of other founders and that um, helps a lot. Pledges are very, very um, um, interesting space where a lot of corporates join the, uh, the Climate Pledge, for example, started by Amazon, and you can definitely connect to that and get some insight from them. Um, and prizes, right? The X Prize, there's the 100 million prize for carbon capturing by Elon Musk and the Earthshot Prize uh, in the UK that you can leverage and start get um, your business rolling. So those are a lot of mechanisms for you to use to build your ventures. Um, and now I wanna share with you seven principles for company building that I um, learned along building companies in the space, but also supporting and, and advising um, founders. Um, and those are very critical, no matter if you build hardware or software companies. Um, so the first one is really talk with your users where your users use their product. So don't sit in the office, think you know what your users, your end users uh, know or need. Go to the field. If it's a power plant, go to the power plant. If you're building a mobility um, a company, go to airports. This is something that I've done uh, with a team of mine at, at BP, for example. Um, we went to airports, we went to train stations, we hustled people on the train you, uh, or during a flight showing them the prototype. So go and be in the field, ask questions, meet, found, meet uh, customers face to face. The second thing is about team building, right? When you build a new venture, a new startup, you're not hiring for volume, right? Um, and this is where everybody talks about head counts. Uh, for me, you need to focus on heart counts and not head counts, right? You wanna hire, you want people to join you with uh, a belief, uh, with the same set of values, with the heart that will, they will uh, invest the time and the energy uh, and, and their knowledge into the things that you believe together with them that could make a change, right? Um, and you want them to be in the ups and the downs, right? So uh, you want them to be in the hard times and the good times when you don't have the cash, you can't raise money, and when you, you know, win a customer and you uh, raise the next round. Though there's the, the people that will help you um, get more resilient and, be, and make your startup resilient um, from start to end. The next principle is really be honest with, with yourself about your data and metrics. I know a lot of companies that are tracking data and metrics using analytics, but when the time comes and they need to review it, they're not honest with themselves. So they look at the data, but they wanna do something else and they just ignore the data. And I've been there and I've done that myself and I've learned the hard way that you, if the, day, the data doesn't lie, right? The data is there, look at it, 
If it says you need to change something, change it. Face it and work hard to make the data better. When the data gets better, you have validation that you improved. And this is really, really important uh, for you to succeed. The next principle is run short experiments, right? Run sprints. No matter what you want to call it, agile, lean, short sprints, one or two weeks, you run with experiments with a clear goal uh, and one vari uh, variable, right? Like a scientific um, experiment. If you, if you do um, long uh, experiments or long projects, your learning is limited. You will learn things only in the end where you don't have the leverage and ability to change things that will help you um, uh, solve those problems. So do quick experiments of one or two weeks uh, and align everyone on your team with that mindset. Then obsess about clarity. Clarity of speech, clarity of your vision, clarity in your product. Everything for you should be clear and you should push for clarity. Your team, um, your PR, your marketing, uh, because if you are not clear, people will not buy in and they will not pay money for your products and services. Um, we're almost done. It's the sixth principle. Start building non-scalable business. Um, we see this with corporates and we th see this with startups. There's big vision and that's really, really important. But as you start your business to build it, build it so a few customers will love it, right? So if you think of building things at scale from day one, you don't have the capacity, you don't have the network, you don't have the customers to do that. And you're building something that might be average for many, many people. But you need to build things that are non-scalable first. And then when you get what we call the product market fit, or when you delight customers, when customers really love your product and service, then it's time to scale it, right? So there are um, really stages for that. The last principle is really for you, for the founders, right? A lot of the founders' work is to build their own personal network, and this is really important. Talk with other founders, join communities, go and mentor others, um, build relationship with investors, and not everything should be transactional. So not every, no, uh, not every conversation with an investor should get you an investment. Not every conversation with a customer should be about you know, selling your product. But build those personal relationships and that will pay off for the long term. Um, that's it. What I can also say that um, you can um, really um, um, look for, for content uh, out there to learn more and this is where you can learn on your own uh, only by doing but also from the uh, network and a lot of knowledge and experience that others share and I'm sharing a lot also in my network on LinkedIn and other mediums so I'm really inviting you to also follow and engage in this conversation as well um, with me as well. Thank you.